Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? Uh, we're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. We have a little bit of a different one today. Uh, we are doing no video because it's, it's pre-market. I guess it's not after hours, but so we're going to be doing kind of our own work and stuff, but we're bringing on Tom Diesel, one of my favorites, just to kind of have a quick chat in the morning before the uh, market opens. Right. So Tom, thank you for coming back on. Thanks for having me, Laura. Of course. Of course. So, of course. So we kind of had an interesting thought for a topic today, and we wanted to talk about, you know, MIC now has almost like 3,000 members or something like that. And, you know, we're constantly growing and, and we do see a lot of really profitable, like really good traders in the community. And then there's some that, you know, have been here for some time that are struggling to find that consistency. And I think a lot of the mods have, we always talk and we notice a lot of similarities in what they're doing wrong. So we kind of wanted to focus on that. So I didn't know, yep. you know, if someone wanted to lead it off, like Tom, like if you, what are some things or one major thing that you've noticed that people are doing that aren't allowing them to kind of make that jump to the next level of trading? Okay, so I think the, you know, one of the most important thing I noticed uh, what they done wrong is the stock selection. I think for me, that's a key. Uh, that's why, you know, they choose the wrong stock or like, you know, and try to, you know, to nail the hard chip, right? Or like they're trying to trade large caps or like, you know, anything like that. It's outside of their niche, right? Yep. And so for me, stock selection is definitely the key. The, sec the, the, the second one is trading as a zombie, right? We all know that. Yeah. We warn like almost every single day. But, you know, like, no, like, no, like really no one wants to listen anyway. I mean, yeah. maybe it's just because of greed. Maybe it's just because they think they didn't make enough. They're trying to make more. Yes, right. I mean, that's happened to a lot of us. But yes, you can make more, but you can also lose more. So, uh, so that's the second thing. Uh, you know, zombie trading, and uh, I think the third uh, that would be no hot stops or like more like no max daily loss. Yeah, and that's what yeah. keeping them at the same level, pretty much, right? Yep. Like, you know, they've been winning for days, and then one trade or like one loss wipes it all and they back to where they started. So yeah, that's I, basically I, the three key things for me. Yeah. I think something that irritates me like the most is like kind of how you mentioned stock selection. So it's like you and you make a low hanging fruit watches every day. Right. And your low hanging yeah. fruits are just based off the previous day or previous two days or whatever, you know, exactly. and then Alex, Alex makes a day one uh, watch this, which is just stocks moving for that day. And then I get these messages from people and members that are trading tickers. Like, I don't know if they're trying to outsmart <laughs> the mods or something. Like, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I did it in the past yep. too. And I feel like you're like, oh, I found a stock. No one's watching. It's going to fade all day. Yeah. You know, I'm going yeah. to make a shit ton of money. And then it's like, that stock wasn't even on my like gap scanner. Like, how exactly. did you lose on this? And those, those low liquidity plays, you see people... Honestly, like I've actually taken bigger losses on those random tickers because there's yeah. no volume yeah. and you think you're like, oh, this is up. No one sees it. And the next thing you know, you're underwater. Yeah, to yeah, me, I mean, a, um, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say to me as a long trader, those are some things that like I honestly look for, like as a long, yep. like for actual setups where, and Tom, we talked about this in weekend mentoring last weekend where, yeah. um, you know, that's that's like a that's a decent setup to look for as a long trader because you know a bunch of people uh short are thinking that it's a broken stock but it's not a broken stock it's a stock that is just low liquidity and those types of moves can really run and really get going because you have so many people who are shorted at the lows thinking all oh, this has to fade it has to fade but you almost want to be shorting those low those high volume tickers that have faded because you know you can rely on that pre-market bag holder and all the volume of people who are stuck right and yeah. that's something that can can really help people if they're trying to get into the you know short world and i'll get into like why i think like people are losing as a long trader later but i think as far as like in the short world goes like that's that's a reason why people would lose yeah absolutely uh, Absolutely. Right. Uh, I th go ahead, Tom. 
Yeah, uh, you know, just one thing I want to add regarding <laughs> that uh, stock selection, and you mentioned that, you know, why people choose like the different kind of stocks to trade is, I think it's because of their ego, okay? They're just trying to prove that they are right, or like they just yep. trying to prove that I can do this myself, right? I don't need yep. that watch list or like, you know, I'm better than this. I'm smarter than this. I can look for something new so I can do it even better, right? I mean, that's usually, I think that that would probably explain to why because it happens to me before when I first started, right? Yep. There's always some sort of, you know, some kind of place from, uh, you know, different people mentioning that. But I think, nah, I, I, I don't trust this guy or like, you know, I yeah. think I can do that better. I think, I think I can find, you know, much better ticker to do that. I mean, so I think that's the main issue, right? But then you need, I mean, in trading, you need to, you know, more like surrender yourself, okay? Just accept the fact that you know shit, okay? The, the only one thing you should worry about is your consistency about making money, right or wrong, yeah. doesn't matter, okay? It's just opinion, Right. Yeah. And I think it's just like well, it's, stupid, bro. Sometimes it's funny because it's funny because like when I I think there's a misconception, like you know, like everyone wants to be taught, like we teach people how to fish, right? Like so that they can like trade by themselves and all that stuff. But something that I this was my misconception when I first started, we all pretty much trade the same tickers, like long or short. Most of us are trading similar tickers thing, yeah. on on the day whether it's yeah. like a broken stock or, or a strong stock like at some point like we're all kind of mixing and matching but it's like if you're trading something that no one's talking about then there's probably a reason for it because yeah. there are times where a ticker is just a no trade i mean there's times yeah. where there's no volume no liquidity it's not a long it's not a short that's it like that's why it's like too like i mean i have volume restrictions like i i know in the past, in the pre-market, I've shorted stocks with like really low volume, and that's gotten me in trouble before. So, like, I pretty much don't touch a stock unless it's traded over a million volume on the day anymore. At least that's the minute, like, bare bare yeah. minimum that I'm even like looking at it. And these people are shorting stocks with like fifty to hundred k volume, and then asking yeah. why there's like you know they're stuck in between the bid and the ask and they can't get in or out. So it's like, you know, I, I think that people need to really hyper focus on that and yeah, just recognize like. That's it. I, yeah. I actually changed, I changed something on my screen. I got rid of like all of my charts. All I have is, is two right now because I found that I was just so spread out attention wise. So now I only look at two. I mean, I have a, a chart a screen to the right that has like charts with no montage, but all I focus on is just two tickers and that's it. I want to nail yes. those two tickers the best I can. And I'm not like looking at every little thing moving and going. So I, yeah. I think that would really, really help people. But you know, and, and then kind of the next topic, Tom, that you were talking about is zombie hour, right? So you want to touch yeah. a bit on that? Like, what, what do you notice about trade? Because you you stick around more, most of the day. But what do you notice about traders during zombie time? And then after that, Harry, I mean, it's like this, this bro. Uh, you know, for zombie time, like, I think Joe said in the weekend mentoring last yeah. uh, last week was like, you know, it's just like temptation, right? Uh, you know, like, you not bow, okay? You're not going to be like him or you yeah. cannot trade like him. So don't try to be like him, right? Yep. Uh, but the thing about zombie hour is that I think is when, you know, people uh, who are not making enough money in the first hour, that's why yep. they tend to stay around to make more, right? Yep. That's usually the case. Or if they are down the first hour, they're trying to make it back. That's, yep. I think that's the main thing. But if they are just like, you know, uh, satisfied with, with their PL, like, you know, I make 500 bucks here, I make 1K, I'm done for the day, right? They wouldn't need to be sticking around after zombie, right? Yep. So, those usually sticking around zombie, those are the ones like, you know, down the day or like didn't make enough. So, for me, like, you know, I think the good way is to cut that immediately, right? Yep. Try to be, I don't know, you know, like, like, I mean, it's easier said than done, but. Try to do it like for a day, okay? Down, yeah. like up or down, green or red, doesn't matter. You know, just, you know, shut down your computer and walk away for one day and see how that feels, right? And then yeah. you can move on to the second day or third day. You know, that's, that's you know. Yeah. What, what do you notice? Like what causes people to lose money as a short seller during zombie hour? I mean, you know, zombie, it's like, 
there's low, like there's like you know, liquidity is really low, right? That's why algos will try to you know to kind of you know trap people. They can manipulate the stock easier, right? That's usually yeah. the case. And basically, it's like you know, like like it's really easy for them to manipulate the retail traders because the liquidity, like the volume is so low. If you put like I don't know, like hundred k bid, right, or hundred k ask. They're gonna panic, right? Because there, there are yep. no big players, so they can easily, you know, move the stock the way they want. Pretty much, you know, like uh, yeah. I I N N yesterday. If you notice, the channel was from five to five fifty, right? But I was channeling yep. that all day long. But not everything, yep. like not everyone could be like Bao, right? You don't have that yep. skill, or like you yep. don't have that patience, you know, to stick around and try to, you know, trade like him. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry, Harry, what do you think for longs? What is the benefit of zombie times, or what do you notice of people during zombie times as a long too that make mistakes? Mm -hmm. I think uh, probably like at first, I kind of want to go back to your first question about like what makes people consistent because I know that you touched on it with Tom, but like as a long trader, I kind of wanted to talk about things like that as well. And so I guess when you're when you're longing and when you're a long trader, for you guys as shorts, you guys know. Like, okay, the, the shit's eventually going to go down. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. And yes, you need correct timing, but, you know, you guys pretty well know that the shit's going to go back to where it came from, right? But when you're a long trader, right, it's all about how it gets to that kind of point, right? Does it just kind of like spike up from a dollar to five and fade all day? Does it grind up all day? You know, like, are you in a position to kind of catch that move? And so, you know, there there's a there's someone in MIC who, uh, who kind of like, he alerts a lot. I'm not going to say his name, but he alerts a lot. <laughs> and the problem is, is that yesterday I was watching uh, AERC. It was kind of like a beaten down chart on the daily. And I thought, okay, today might be the day where this could bounce. Right. And so I was watching it. And so I took some into, I believe like, uh, in around 13 and then I sold into 14.5 like 14.8 you know up there and uh, he alerted it and you know by the time that you are catching these types of alerts on a long trade uh, they're probably done right they're probably finished by the time they hit your scanner they're probably finished so as a long trader you need to hunt a lot more and you can trade the hot chicks if you want to right like you're always going to have some volatility. And if you can master the hot chicks, that can be about like, I don't know, like 50% of your income as a long trader just by mastering the hot chicks. But, um, you know, if you're also kind of hunting for a couple of plays, like maybe something beaten down on the daily, maybe something is, you know, it's a low float and it's been consolidating all day and we start kind of pushing high into the afternoon you know, maybe that's something that you want to look at as well, right? So you have to be hunting as well. And I think stock collection is is key because you, you know, as a long, it's all about how much supply is to the left of me, right? Do we have bag holders? Do we have people stock from the pre-market? You know, where are short sellers going to be trapped? And I will tell yeah. you from firsthand experience, short sellers are not going to stop out until we are over that top line. So if you are trying to long like three lines down or two lines down of some support on a broken chart, like that is just not going to work. Like that's, that's going to be an inconsistent strategy for you. And I think as far as zombie times go, I know zombie time is reserved for long, but you know, we have had market cycles where nothing zombies. We have had market cycles where things zombie a lot. We have mar had market cycles where things are saying the same. So I think it's all going to be relative. I think as a short seller and as a long trader as a whole, um, unless you are really skilled and you're consistent making money in the first hour, I don't think you're going to find it in the second or third or fourth hour. And the reason yeah. being is just because, you know, I, I don't know many traders who have waited all the way till zombie time as a long trader to make money because you have the pre-market, right? Things are running in the pre-market. That's going to tempt you. You have things after the open. That's going to tempt you. And the more decisions you make, I like to kind of say the more drunker you get. So like, you know, it's like one beer, two beer, three beer, four beer, you know, you're on your eighth beer. How are you supposed to make a rational decision, right? You're not even supposed to drive a car. And so I think by the time zombie time rolls around, traders are kind of intoxicated by whatever has happened during the day, whether they've won, whether they've lost, they have made so many decisions 
like to get to that point that decision now, fatigue. yeah, it's decision fatigue, right? They don't, they don't know what they're doing. They, they, and they're like, they see this stock pop up and they're like, man, that's a great long. But it's like, bro, I can tell you firsthand that the majority of the things that are popping up on your scanner, I don't even want to go long because either I should have sold it or I am selling by the time it hits your scanner. Right. I mean, you just have to really, really hunt as a long and you longing is really coming up with uh, a lot of organic ideas, right? You're not going to be handed those broken stocks every day. The hot chick may be there, right? We may have a hot chick, but it might not be a good, you know, setup and play. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, if we're looking right now, you know, you could, you could argue a ton of things are the hot chick on a day. Right. But unless we're, ha we have short strapped and unless we have like shorts forced to stop out and we're getting that kind of big extended range move higher, like you're not going to make money on the hot chick either. So it's like, yeah, no, I like that. It, you know, Harry, you know, you know what I've noticed about you and I want to just interject because this goes along with what you're saying is that as a long, I mean, I've watched you trade now for like three years and like something I've noticed, especially in the last year is the more active that you are pre-market and like at the open, the faster you usually shut it down for the day. Like you yeah. usually are done around zombie time. And if you don't trade at all during pre-market or during the open, you kind of stick around and like you might see how zombie hour reacts and stuff like that. And even then sometimes you just walk, but it just yeah. seems like, I mean, that's exactly what you're saying. And like, yeah. I want everyone listening to know, like he actually does this. Like, it's not like, he's not just saying this is a good idea. He actually will just walk away if they're, you know, if he's had a good morning because decision fatigue is a real thing. You know, yeah. he has a great pre-market, great open, makes enough money. And he says, fuck it. All the moves are done. I'm not going to stick around and just, cause then you, you're right. You get intoxicated. You think the next move is going to do the same thing. Yeah, and I just want to say, you have to pay attention to when they are moving stocks, right? So we were in a market cycle where everything was fading and nothing was running. Well, stocks were being moved at like 6 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, you know? Like, that's not, that's not, no one's up during them, right? The, the stock has already moved. It's, it's gapped up. It's made its move, right? The move that you're looking for at 8 o'clock already happened at, you know, 6 o'clock a.m. So what are you doing? You know, it, a stock is only going to make so many moves in a day and stocks as a whole, like as a basket are, are only are going to move at certain times of the day. Sometimes it's going to be the afternoon, right? We get faders all day and then everyone's like, oh man, everything's moving in the afternoon. Well, nothing moved in the morning, nothing moved after the open. So of course, you know, people are going to be looking for a move in the afternoon, right? But when we get these big hot chicks that move from like $10 to $20 in the morning, don't be looking for crazy afternoon moves. The move happened in the morning, right? So you have to be paying attention on the day. When are they moving stocks? Did they move a stock pre-market? Are they moving stocks pre-market? Um, 6 a.m., you know, are they moving stocks at uh, 10, 30 a.m.? And that is something that, you know, I, I think can, can help people out is that pay attention to when things are being moved, right? I know that if things had moved pre-market and we had a wild pre-market, like I can, I can go for lunch with my girlfriend because, and not yeah. worry, you know? Yeah, that's huge. Okay. Uh, you know, and it, and I, yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just one thing uh, I want to add about the zombie, okay? And I think the most, like the common problem for the most traders is, you know, they, uh, you know, they have like one day where they make money doing the zombie, right? And they use that for the context, you know, for the wrong one. It's like they are confusing with that. Okay, should I, like, you know, I make money today. So zombie is good, right? Or like, you know, next day they're losing on zombie. And then they suddenly feel like, you know, a zombie is not working for me. So you cannot put one day into the perspective. It's like you need to think about like the long-term picture, okay? The majority of the time, if you trade after zombie, you're gonna lose, right? Trading is the probabilities yep. game and you have to weight that. And I yep. think, how, how about we do this? You know, try to challenge, you know, them. Like, let's say if you down the first hour, right? You're not allowed to trade zombie, okay? Yeah. Yep. But if you green, you are allowed to trade zombie, but you can only give back 30% of your winning profits that day. And you can yep. use that to make yep. more, up to you. But how about, you know, try to challenge the members to do that and see if that, you know, it's going to, you know, change their trading, yeah. uh, you know, or not. I like that. 
I do like that. And I, I think I think people have this weird misconception with zombie that like, you know, like we recommend walking away, right? Because it's like one, yeah. I just think you don't want to be staring at the screens all day. You know, I think we have a life to live. You make a lot of money in the morning, go do it. But two, I know it's he, you know, easier said than done sometimes. He asked for me as well. But uh, you know, we had to come up with some sort of rules, right? You know, like same yeah. thing with match daily loss. No matter what you do, no matter what you trade, the moment that hit you, done for the day. I'm like, okay, no questions yeah. asked. That should be, you know, like the ultimate rule. And so try to do that for the zombie as well. Because yeah, sometimes you could see opportunity during a zombie. Sometimes you could make money from that. Sometimes you lose money from that. So it's hard for them to kind of wait it out a little bit, right? Yeah. But if yeah, we come up funny. with a rule, like, you know, stop, if you read in, 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 yep. in the first hour, I mean, that's easy thing to do, right? I mean, if you, yeah. if you read and you still continue to trade that, that means, you know, like it's pretty much <laughs> fuck already, right? You are gambling yeah. already. I think, I think rules could be in place too. Like something I've noticed about Bao, and like, this is probably more of like an advanced strategy or something, not strategy, but just an advanced idea is that, you know, if you're going to stick around, you need to make rules in place where like, you're not just going to start shorting, especially as a short seller. You yeah. can't just short every little bounce on a stock that is yeah. broken because eventually what happens, and this is what I used to do, is you add, add, add. And then you end up stopping out at the top of a big bounce. I think as a short seller, exactly. you, om- you actually yeah. want to see these stocks zombie. You want to see them zombie back to the outer line. Like that needs to be your kind of end all be all is like, I'm not shorting this unless it retests either. Like you can call it a VWAP. You can call it, you know, a certain level on the chart that you shorted previously, a previous resistance. But like, you yeah. can't just be like hitting bounce after bounce after bounce. Because how many times did it happen where, that one, that one time you do it, it just blows up your whole day. So it's yeah, either I, yeah. you wait for your perfect entry or that's it. I really think though, as well, like the game, you have to remember, yes, the game is rigged, you know, towards longs. Like, yes, we have like that kind of rigging towards longs as well. But I'd say the game is more rigged towards stopping out shorts now. Like, you know, yep. how often do we see that? stock just breaks high day by like 10 cents they stop out every single short and then they just tank it right how often do we see and they stop on for long as well but i mean recently i've seen it like for every one long stop hunt there's probably 10 stop hunts for shorts so as a short seller you need to be putting yourself into a position where you're going short into areas where you know that you'll find like liquidity as far as longs chasing and shorts being forced to cover, but, you know, around the line as well. And where yep. do we see that the most? We always <laughs> see longs chasing for that VWAP reclaim. We always see shorts stopping yep. out over VWAP, right? We always get those kind of VWAP clear outs. High a day is another big one, right? You know, if yep. you're shorting a bit above high a day with a tight stop, um, you know, as long as it's not a crazy low float or anything like that, you know, how yeah. often do we see them push it up and then just Stop yank out. the bid yeah. and every short is going, man, I shouldn't have stopped out. And every yeah. long is saying to themselves, man, I shouldn't have chased, right? And so yeah. you have to be paying attention. It's like the whole game is a, just a liquidity hunt. You know, it's literally just a liquidity yeah. hunt. Like which stop, which side is going to kind of cave first. And yeah. um, that's kind of what I see every single day. And we the majority of the runners are always going to be low floats, right? Because they're easy to move. Uh, It doesn't take much money to move a low float company around. As far as like, like what I kind of find is that they're either going to move stocks kind of under 10 mil or it's going to be over, you know, 25, 30 mil because for the higher floats, the institutions are kind of, you know, buying it up to be able to control. And for the lower floats, you know, it's easy for three guys to have, you know, two or $3 million each in an account and just manipulate them stock this, themselves and just split it amongst like two, three guys and say, okay, well, we're going to do this. We're going to control the supply. We're going to move it around. And they have their own kind of agenda towards that. Right. But I mean, what I see is that these uh, stop hunts um, are, are, you know, where you should be looking to get short, right? Not until it's, yep. you, not until it's kind of crazy or you want to just, you know, short the broken stocks and make it easier. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not condoning trading a hot chick, but if you are going to trade a hot chick, it better be in situations like that or else you will lose. Like on the inner lines, you're going to lose. 
right? Because there's no edge on the inner lines on a hot chick, bro. There's no edge there. So, and that's what I was trying to tell other people. Like, what are you doing? You know, how often do we see that kind of like fake death candle? Three candles later, we reclaim and trap and everyone's like, but I shorted a death candle. It's like, no, bro. What you did is that you FOMO'd in and you traded on the fly. You had no plan, you know? And so it's just a broken record repeating itself. And so if you had a shorted that kind of area where, you know, maybe we have a, a seller at seven and that seller at seven lifts and we rip to 750, 750 is high a day. Every single long is chasing. Everyone's like, man, this is the move. And then we kind of start stalling over that high day and we stall and stall and stall. And then you notice that acceleration starts to, you know, flip and we get that kind of pause and then it starts going in the other direction. That's going to be your edge of short seller. If you can just wait for moments like that, those kind of liquidity hunts and those like stop on games, that's how you're going to make a lot of money as a short seller. But the problem is that 99% of people can't wait for their lines. And someone messaged me this morning, how do I deal with FOMO? It's like, bro, how you're going to deal with FOMO is when you're sick and tired of fucking losing. And you say to yourself, I want to become a profitable trader now. And I'm not, I'm going to follow my plan. And when following your plan becomes like more insane than making money every day, that's when you're going to have a shot. But if you yeah. are just focusing on uh, P&L and trading after zombie and you're not going to listen to the mods and you're not going to, you know, uh, follow literally what you're paying for at MIT, then, I mean, you probably don't have a hope, right? If you're still trying to reinvent the wheel every single day, you know, and you're at MIT and you're not watching videos, then there is no hope for you. That's it. Yeah, I, I agree, dude. And I, I, I think like too many guys now, like they're so focused on doing like they just need to trade i think new tra- like newer traders or people who've been doing this for like they feel everything like like you said you brought up something that triggered it everyone's been messaging me hey bro i see a death candle and it freaking reclaims it's because dude every single person and, and their mother is now shorting this move that just happened and i think like of course it's going to bounce of course these stocks are going to reclaim because all everyone is doing now is they're like they miss the actual trade whether they're a long or a short they miss the actual entry of the actual trade and then they chase everything and that's what's causing these like stupid issues and it's like i I don't really understand like you know like we talk about this daily like you know you kind of want to be you're trading again we do it all the time we're trading against pumpers the short sellers especially you know it's like you're trading against what the mass is doing so i always have this mentality of like dude if, if i get into a position i think way too many people are on the same side of what i'm doing then i usually don't like it and i'm actually really uncomfortable that's like when I usually get bounced and stuff like that. And it's like, it's kind of true. It's like, when are you going to like these newer guys going to realize like the sooner you stop kind of like FOMOing in, you know, trading without a plan, trading on the fly. I mean, you might not just become profitable, but you'll at least become more break even. You'll stop kind of losing, you know, it, it's a weird thing between that and sizing. Those are the biggest thing that I, I really noticed with the newer guys. Yeah. I think it's like this. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about strategies here. That's what the videos are for, yeah. right? But I'm just going to keep it really simple, okay? What it really comes down to. And, you know, at the end of the day, we are risk managers, right? Uh, yeah. You know, in, in trading, you want to, you know, lose, like, you know, just a, 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 a small part of your p and and then try to make, you know, more money on that, right? Basically, taking a small loss, and then aim for a bigger win. That's how you're going to grow your account, right? Yep. You know, like pretty easy. If you think about yep. that, if you manage the risk well and you let your winners run, right, you're going to be profitable. You're going to you know, be able to grow that uh, account. But how can you do that if you have FOMO and if you don't have a plan? It's impossible, Okay. So if you FOMO in and you don't have, you know, a proper risk reward, you're not going to be able to make money, right? It's same exactly like Harry said, you know, good entries, right? And then you're going to have a good risk reward trade. I mean, you know, I'm not going to touch on that, but the key thing here, I think, is you need to more like, you know, surrender yourself, accept the fact that you know shit, okay? Yep. I know nothing. All I know is how much I'm risking. That's it. I'm risking. 50 cents here to make a dollar, a dollar 50. Accept that. Surrender yourself, whatever. Okay. I mean, 
I don't even care what the style is going to do. Okay, I'm going to take a loss here. I'm going to take multiple loss. And then if I'm right, I'm going to make back all that loss. And, you know, there's that, right? Yeah. I mean, you can tweak it out whatever you want. You can trick whatever you want. You can have FOMO. You can have zombie. You can do whatever you want, like I said, you know. But have some sort of rule, right? If you're down the first hour, don't trade after zombie. If you up in the first hour, you know, okay, you can go ahead and trade it, but only risk like 20 to 30% of your winning profits, right? In that case, you can use that to make more. Worst case scenario, okay, you know, I'm I'm up a grand now. Okay, I'm going to lose that 300 bucks, okay? Yeah. I can trade all day. I can FOMO. I can chase. I can do whatever the fuck I want, but within that frame, 300 bucks, and that's it. And, yeah. you know, to me, that's been kind of my aha moment, you could say it. Yep. The moment I manage my rest, right, and I kind of let my winners run, you know, like the sky is the limit, right? You know, when yep. you win, try to, you know, like blow it out, right? You know, you can go to a million or whatever you want. But if I'm wrong, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to get the fuck out right away. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't I like care, it. you know. That's all. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. I think. I, I go there. Oh, no. I was just going to say, like, I think that some people, some people, there are going to be some people who are able to trade zombie, right? Like, I agree with Tom's rule 100%. Like, let's say if yeah. you're up in the morning, there's no reason to go back, you know? And then the problem is, is that, like, you're never going to be up enough, right? Yeah. You're, you're, and, and you're, you're never going to be, like, it, it becomes this balance of, like, am I trading zombie because I have an edge or am I trading zombie because, you know, of something that happened before? And also, like, a lot of people are just not disciplined, you know, like they're going to be like, yeah. oh, like, you know, I may be down a little bit, but I can make it back zombie. You know, I, I, I yeah. can do it. I, I'm disciplined enough. It's like, no, bro, yeah. your stats show me that you are undisciplined after 1030, right? If you got one of us to look at your stats and we see on that little time graph that after 10 30 you lose money we're going to tell you to never trade zombie again right and a lot of people know that they shouldn't be trading zombie and a lot of people know that they shouldn't be doing things and they still do right they're on discipline so yeah. i think i think a big thing for me was creating rules around my trading like like recently it's i haven't been trading rules. i you know yeah. I, recently i haven't been trading pre-market and the reason reason why is just because i found that in pre-market you know I'm still groggy, right? I'm not always making the best decisions. I'm not always what's doing what's best for myself. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm just not going to trade pre-market anymore. Like, you know, Alex doesn't trade pre-market. You know, no one's really trading pre-market. So I've been spending pre-market just really getting super, super prepared for the open. And I've been making more money at the open now because I'm so, so prepared. And I'm not like scatterbrained at the open. Like, oh, what if I forgot about this? Or what if I forgot about this, right? I have a solid concrete plan in place with absolutely no emotion. So I absolutely kill the open. And then we go into zombie. And then we go into the afternoon. And I'm still, you know, using that momentum to kind of push me through. That's what I've kind of been doing. So for me, like the money that I'm going to make after the open is not even going to be close to pre-market just due to the liquidity and due to the sizing. So I've just said to myself, all right, I'll trade after the open. Okay, I'll trade in the afternoon and after that. And that is what has really propelled me and really, you know, allowed me to capitalize on the opportunities uh, in the past like month or so, you know, that's, that's helped me a lot. Yeah. So I think like, I like you, have to find, you have to find what works for you. And if you find that you're undisciplined after 1030, and if you find that you're undisciplined, you know, in pre-market or you take a loss in pre-market or pre-market's not for you, I, I honestly recommend that, you know, 100% of traders should probably not trade pre-market, stick to a yeah. solid plan, you know, use that plan at the open, then you're set, then you know what you're doing, you, you, you really understand, right? And then maybe if you have such a solid plan at the open and you prove to yourself that you're disciplined enough to not trade pre-market, then you can maybe trade zombie. Right. You know, obviously, if you're in yeah. a bad mindset, don't do that. But, you know, have a concrete plan in place when you're trading. Don't just trade zombie to trade zombie. You know, have a concrete plan in place and really use that to your advantage and really kind of exploit that. And, you know, that's what will kind of take you to the next level, in my opinion. I love it. I think we should uh, I think we should end there. That was really good. Yeah, uh, bro. Uh, if you 